So yeah, man, you got into yo. You're the vocalist of the Chrome Mags, one of my favorite, definitely my favorite older hardcore band. One of my favorite bands, period. I stopped listening to hardcore for a while, but one of the bands I always listened to, even when I stopped, was the Chrome Mags. Chrome Mags, Bad Rains, P- Product of Waste, Colin of Arabia. Those were the few bands. That oh I yeah, Colin of Arabia is good. Man. Yeah, my, we played one of my some favorite bands. Yo, you know who he looks like right here? <laughs> Keith from Cause for Alarm. <laughs> Oh, man. No, but, man. <laughs> you Swear to God, dude. You could be <laughs> his fucking twin fucking... He might be He might be your dad. Oh, I don't shit. know. I'm just fucking... Oh, you wrote those uh, <laughs> Hard Times, Survival of the Streets, uh, World, uh, We Gotta Know, World Peace Can't Be Done, because you were living that. You were living it. We right? Gotta Know, we Malfunction. Gotta know, yep. I mean, some of them songs... Eric Casanova wrote the lyrics to Survival of the Streets, and I wrote the chorus to Hard Times. Like, stay, it was bits and pieces, mm-hmm. so, you know. But, yeah, you know, you're living this shit, and you're out there, you know, doing it. But, you know, there was a lot of stupidity involved in the early Chrome Eggs, too. Like, you know, that when I left the temple and rejoined the band, mm-hmm. the band originally started in 81, and then it broke up and everybody went their separate ways and then got back together with Paris, Mackie on drums, and then uh, Harley playing bass. And then they had Eric Casanova sang like, if you want to, whatever. He, I, I was at both the shows at CB's and he got fired and I had to audition against Roger from Agnostic Front and whatever that you know yeah but, but 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 like you know there was songs kill the ayatollah and all this bullshit and like it's just stupid lyrics too mm-hmm. so yeah. that you, didn't, became you didn't have a say in the right? limit yeah. and then uh you know i just tried to inject the philosophy of what i learned as a monk and of the Vedas, and that's why we called the album the age of quarrel i was yeah. like yo this is the age of kali yeah, this is yeah, the, the age kali. of quarrel like fucking they got the explosion yeah, yeah. so like and i know that originally it was a bunch of insane things going down in that yeah explosion. uncle al drew that and then the fucking record company was like oh hell <laughs> no yeah it was craziness and then uh it was actually turned out for the better because like that fucking image is like f- went down in history so yeah. that was the manager's Chris Williamson from Rock Hotel want, said, I, like, let's put this image on there. And he found it. And I was like, all right. Yeah. You know, I was pissed. But now, in retrospect, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad for better, that yeah. fucking yeah, happened. Because, yeah. like, the other thing was a little cartoonish. And, like, you know. You know, my favorite thing is that, like, the Chromax, the lyrics of the in the Age of Quarrel, it's like, um, you can see there's, like, a street mentality, but also a consciousness to it. Mm. Like... You talk about um, searching for the truth is just what keeps us alive. Yeah. I got to break these shackles. I got to break yeah. these chains. The only way we will is if we use our brains. Talking about the purpose of life. And you're talking about like spiritual things and metaphysical things. And But at know. the same time, like dealing in chaos. Yeah. Survival like, of the streets. Wake up yeah. with a you gun know, on You know, you look head. at, yeah, yeah, like you look at the lotus, man. The lotus yeah. exists in dirty, the turbulent water. But yeah. like... The lotus yeah. ain't touched by that. That's that's what the whole process of meditation yeah. and all of that taught me was like, yo, it's real shit. It's like, you know, that's the whole thing is everybody just wants to like read shit on the Internet yeah. and nobody wants to apply it. And that's yeah. even in the PMA effect. My last book, I, I said, yo, anybody could say, oh, I read that book. That don't mean shit. Knowing is not enough. Knowing is not enough. It's There's lots of though. motherfuckers that read books, right? But how many people applied what's in those books? You have to apply it every moment of your life in every situation. And that's the test. Is not, and that's what Prabhupada said. Yeah. We don't want armchair philosophers yeah. that could. Prabhupada said, you could teach. You could teach a parrot to chant Hare Krishna, but then when you grab it by the <laughs> neck, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> when the pressure's there that's yeah, it baby yeah. and the pressure is what yeah. like my writing teacher Robert McKee said real true characters yeah. only revealed under pressure the greater yeah. the pressure the greater the revelation of true character 
Why do you think they put all these special forces motherfuckers through the most insane shit? Yep. To see who's going to crack. It's yep. called weeding out Weed the bugs. Out. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they do. Like, there's no quitting in this shit when, yeah. you, when you're in the middle of a fucking... When you're on the path. battlefield, yeah. you're like, oh, I don't want. I'm gonna go home and fucking go on uh, fucking Facebook. Yeah, like, yeah. You let know, me take a break. Give me a second. It, it, it's not yeah. like that, you know. It's yeah. like, and it's the same thing in life, you know. There's, you got to take shit serious, man. You know, it's, mm. I have a brother who's a. Dr- my other younger brother's a drug addict. So like that would have been my life. I look at what he that motherfucker when they when we tell people that's our younger brother, they're like, "What? I thought that was your fucking older brother, man." But like that could have been me too if I would have ate mystery yeah. meat off Muhammad's fucking schism card on the street and fucking <laughs> you know, fucking drank and did yeah. coke and smoked and did all this shit. Mix shit. I would look the same fucking way. But you know, you're more, you're on a positive path. You, I know you. I've done it a few times, but I actually started doing it because of you. I saw you did it. Uh, the chilies on wheels. Yeah, cooking the yeah. vegan food for them. Yep. Yeah, we well, I don't we cook it. Food. I just go out and serve it, mm-hmm. and then I do the interfaith community services. I've never done that one. It's like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, right? he went ve- I made him t- get his shit vegan because he was doing butter in some of his food. I'm like, dude, oh, just get all that yeah. shit out. You don't need to serve people that. Mm. So now everything he does is plant based too. That's awesome. I mean, he mm. would he the the. The kitri, which is, it's, the, it's a very nutritious food. Yeah. It's like rice, beans, spices, and vegetables, mm-hmm. and it was organic. And then, you know, he, he, he would have butter in the cake that he made. I was like, bro, you can make that shit. Just make everything plant-based, man. Yeah. There's, nobody's going to know the difference. Especially you know? now, they got so many you shit You could put there. coconut oil or whatever the fuck in the cake. and yeah. So now everything he serves is plant-based. Because I wouldn't serve the cake. I was like, nah, I'm not serving that, dude, because mm-hmm. it's got butter in it. Yeah. So I would serve the kitchen to people. But now everything's plant-based that he does, too. And he's out there, uh, you know, three days a week, man, yeah, for yo, the consistent. last years. Yo, 30 years. years. It's a great thing, it's, it's, man. It's crazy when yeah, I think man. about that. When we went to Tompkins to give out the food. You could see the people. They It's like a community. They already know they're there. It's like everyone's yeah. united, you know. It's you know, and it's it's about helping people and doing service, and you know, that's why I opened up the yoga center on St. Mark's and spent my life savings for ten years to keep it open, man. You know, and my mom's was like, "Yo, you could have, you could have, you could have had a house." What? what Which one know? is it? On uh, we was at ninety three St. Mark's. I opened up. I renovated the whole building, and then the second floor. Mm. They gave us the second floor. Which studio. went all the way back. Is it yoga for the people? No. Okay. That guy, I just got, he was all fucking doing fucked up shit. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a fucking piece of shit, hitting on women and fucking all kinds of shit. No, this was, uh, it was like a Hare Krishna temple, but it was that Prabhupada is the guru. Mm-hmm. We didn't allow none of these other dudes coming in there and, you know, hustling people or nothing like that. And, uh, yeah, but we, uh, you know, I did all the construction. I had a construction company at the time, and then I, G- I GC'd the job. Mm-hmm. So we we rebuilt out all the halls with lath and fucking yeah. structural light. Like, not even put sheetrock in there. We we like some fucking solid hand shit. built yeah. every fucking yeah. wall for them. Yeah. Got somebody to do the stoop, the outside of the building, and renovated the whole floor and then kept it open for 10 years and you know my mother was like are you crazy and then i said just come and see what this place does for people and she came to a sunday feast and like there was like a hundred people there and like she just after she saw what that place is doing for people and the community and how much love was in the room and everything like that it's more valuable she's like now i understand I said that's why Prabhupada said he built a house that the whole world could live in. This is, this is like, I can own a house, a big ass house. There's a lot of rich motherfuckers that live in big ass houses yeah. that's miserable, wasting and space. lonely, yeah. and fucking got no joy in it. I was like, yo, I get to come here every morning and go to meditation and then cook and help mm-hmm. people and feed people and then see the people coming in here and getting helped by real life. the philosophy like you're saving people's yeah, lives by giving them Prabhupada's yeah. books like it's priceless. how do you put a how do you put a price tag on that what's a human life worth you know 
Especially now, everything has a price tag. So yeah, that it's just bullshit, and the, and it's fucking the price tag. Ch- price tag is cheap, man, because like they don't value human life. These fucking people, they could give a fuck That's less. The last thing, man. You know, all these people talk all this shit. You know, that they care and all this stuff. They don't give a flying fuck about you or me or anybody. That's what I keep saying, man. We're all just a fucking number to them. 100%. Fucking That's ants. That's what it is, yeah. man. We got to be, we got to take the shit back to the streets, to the fucking grassroots shit and care for each other yes. and look out for each other. You know? How'd you, get, how'd you get started with the whole Iron Man thing? What made you want to start I just needed it? to challenge myself, and mm. uh, I, I ran some marathons mm. and then did did other stuff. And then, you know, I saw the Ironman Kona World Championship in the early 80s. My Man. uncle, who passed away recently, was uh, a big cyclist. He was from Italy, so, mm. like, he got... We used to watch the Paris-Roubaix and the fucking Tour de France on Wide World of Sports. And then... He goes, yo, you got to watch this. Come over. It was uh, the Iron Man in Hawaii. I was like, wow, I'm going to fucking do that race someday. <laughs> and I always been running and swimming and, like, you know, cycling and stuff like that. So putting the three together and then, like, training for it. I never even did a triathlon ever. My first triathlon was an Iron Man in New York. In New York. Mm-hmm. And, like, I played Philly the night before. Fucking this is hardcore, right? Yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe Hardcore's thing. And then drove back, no sleep, went and did an Ironman in August, 96 degrees, soaking fucking humidity, no sleep, stress fracture in my foot, and, and just banged it out, you know? But yeah, and then I just kept going yeah. as a way to, like, challenge yourself. And you've done 11 now. 11 and one, uh, I did a half Ironman, mm-hmm. and... Uh, bunch of olympics mm. marathons you know mm. shit like you that. said like they never go to plan like you always it's always like a challenge like yeah it's always like you know man proposes god disposes mm. you know you're always gonna think yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna perform this something. way this way this i way. mean i was racing for for two years with a triple hernia like that chattanooga shit for that iron mind documentary i, I was yeah. fucking having to run holding my hernia in and shit like and like pain like a motherfucker, never taking no pain pills, none of that shit, just dealing with it. And then like, cause I didn't, I got insurance, so I had to like fix what the fuck was broke, you know? So I got that done last March and then I was coming back, fucking kept the weight down this winter and then, and then like, you know, trained fucking hard as fuck. And then this shit comes and I had supposed to do three Ironmans, now there's only one left on the table. And September 19th, but I think, see if that's going to happen. But if not, hey, you know, I mean, I'm out there training. I'm doing it. It makes me feel good anyway, so why yeah. the fuck not? So what is your, your daily training like for this Ironman? I mean, I have a coach, Samantha Murphy. Mm. And if you look her up, she's legit. She coached people that went pro, turned pro and everything. So she's 140. The number 140 under six, underscore six girl. That's okay. my coach. So she'll put you on, you know, mm-hmm. what time a regimen of like, yeah. all right, you're going to fucking go and do, you know, 3,000 meters in the pool of fucking drills and mm-hmm. like, and then like ride later or, you know, okay, you have to stay. Like I work with a power meter now and uh, mm-hmm. for watts. Mm-hmm and heart rate and everything so like you have to work out in zones Mm. zone one zone two okay you know or if you have a trainer in the house that you hook your bike up to but like yeah you you go ride all right go ride uh, 85 miles and run 15 miles off the bike like you gonna fucking tell me like plant-based diets don't work Mm. (laughs) Because you're doing the most extreme physical doing exercise and it's working shit. just fine. And I'm yeah. like in the gym three days a week now too, like trying to keep, you know. You've been working out in the basement, I've been saying. Yeah. That's <laughs> the best The Boricua me. fucking yeah, yeah. gym. You know, <laughs> just dungeon. like, uh, 
Yeah, man, keep keeping the muscle on and shit so that mm-hmm. if this shit does happen, I'm probably going to pull a slow time. It's a tough course anyway. It's like almost 4,000 feet of elevation. It's hills on the bike. It's mm-hmm. hills on the run. Yeah. So, like, if it happens, I'll go bang it out. And if it takes me fucking 14 hours, so fucking what? I had a great 14-hour day. What did you do today? Mm-hmm. I finished the motherfucking Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> and got to meet all these amazing people and all this other shit. So, you know. You know, even going back to the COVID thing, like, they closed down the gyms. If they really cared about our health, they would have us fucking staying in shape and fighting our immune system, building it up. Yeah. Like, they, that's, like they they're not even opening them up. Like, they socially distance in any, in any, in any fucking place. Yeah. Listen, it's all, like, they close down the mom and pop stores. Yep. And so that the corporations yes. are the only yeah. ones making what is it, the like money. Walmart he made and an Home extra Depot. fucking one point eight billion dollars. Yeah, the Amazon COVID. shit, or whatever. Like, get yeah. the fuck out of here! And they put all these businesses out of fucking business, closed them down, non-essential. Says who, motherfucker? Who determines what's essential and yeah. what ain't? We don't even have a say in it. They just you got liquor for us. stores open. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, because people would withdraw and then the hospitals would get over. So what does that mean? Why don't you send them to fucking rehab, right? The hospitals ain't overrun. I, I proved it. It's all bullshit, dude. It's all fucking bullshit. The whole rhetoric, flatten the curve, you flatten the curve. They, they're just implementing it little by little by little by little by little, and the agenda is coming out. And if you think they don't have a fucking agenda, you're not paying attention. Yo, a lot of people are like, oh, let's get back to normal. What's normal? Fucking eating junk food again What's and fucking normal, watching TV every day? Your normal is what, you know, if you believe what the fuck they're saying, it's like these practices of what you're doing to get food is what's causing the shit. Going back to normal. You know, what's, you, what's normal, motherfucker? That ain't normal. That's abnormal. That's like young Frankenstein, Abby normal. <laughs> you have to see that movie to get that reference. <laughs> You ever seen that movie? Uh. You never saw Young Frankenstein? <laughs> he, he tells him to go get the brain, and he couldn't get the brain of the person that they wanted in a jar. So it was, it was Marty Feldman, and he played a hunchback. And uh, Gene Wilder. All right, here we go. Here we go. One of y'all motherfuckers is up on shit. And then he grabs a, a, a fucking brain that says abnormal. And then the... He, they put it in Frankenstein, and the motherfucker's like, ah, bugging the fuck out. <laughs> and Gene Wilder's like, who, what brain did you put? What brain did you? He goes, I don't know, Abby somebody. He's like, Abby who? He's like, Abby normal. And he's like, abnormal. <laughs> <laughs>